Does God predetermine some people to go to heaven, whereas others are sent to hell? And who are the elect referred to in Scripture? Well, today we're going to answer those questions from the Word of God. The title of today's message is, Does God Predestine People for Heaven and Others to Hell by Election? Today's going to be an especially good day to take notes and also to write down some of the scripture references that I just won't have time to read due to our time constraints. I'm going to be covering a lot of material in the short time that we have together. Really critical that you understand the doctrine of election and the doctrine of predestination and their differences so that not only you will know, but so that you can explain those doctrines to others with the backup proof you need of those doctrines. I'm Pastor John Haggard at Treasure Top, and there are no greater doctrines in the Bible that upset more people than the doctrine of election and the doctrine of predestination. We're going to take a deep dive into both and why it matters. You know, a lot of churches today, you'll never hear a sermon on the doctrine of election or on the doctrine of predestination or other hard sayings of the Bible that matter, such as the reality of hell. Many of today's churches merely tickle the ears by trying to blend in with the current culture of the world with things like mesmerizing so-called Christian music, complete with smoke machines, light shows, and sometimes even circus acts. At Treasure Top, we teach from the Bible, from the very Word of God, and this is very important, folks, in context. Not lifting parts of scripture here and there to fit a narrative or trying to blend in with cultural norms so as not to upset somebody. That's known as pretext, taking scripture out of context. And at Treasure Top, we speak the word of God in context. If you're a first time listener or maybe you've joined us recently, welcome in. At our website, treasuretop.com, you can hear all of my podcast messages there based on the word of God with answers to the hard sayings of the Bible. You know, in order to be a whole Christian, it takes a whole Bible. And for that reason, I preach the full Word of God to the best of my ability. To get Bible-based messages, just go to treasuretop.com, the homepage, look for the podcast tab, and subscribe when you're there so that you never miss another message. And by the way, when you hear me quote Scripture, most of the time, I use the NASB translation of the Bible, unless I note otherwise. Before we answer the question, does God predestine people for heaven and others to hell by election, I want you to know as a listener that you may not really fully realize how important your role really is in our ability to broadcast these messages on radio, TV, social media, YouTube, and the internet. Without the support of our viewers and listeners, we're significantly hampered in our ability to preach God's Word to the extent that Jesus commands in Matthew 28, 19, and 20. If you give us prayer support. If you send us financial support, you are the lifeline of this ministry. And there's something else you can do that is more than just praying, which is a priority, and more than just giving. And that is to talk to people. Tell them about Treasure Top. And if there's a message that has impacted your life, whether it's a better understanding of the Word of God or maybe a change that came about in your life for the better, tell your family and friends where to find us right here. And we'd love to hear from you and how this ministry has impacted your life. You can do that. Just go to the website, treasuretop.com, and send us an email. And as I said a moment ago, Pray. The kingdom of God moves forward on the prayers of God's people. In Acts 4.31, the author Luke writes of a gathering of early Christians and says, And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Did you notice there that when they had prayed, they spoke with boldness? And that's how the kingdom of God advances. It's prayer that brings forth a bold, spirit-filled witness to Christ. And if God puts it on your heart and you are able to give, gifts are tax deductible. Our online resources are free to all who want them because we want to make the word of God available to everyone who wants it, whether or not they have the financial resources. As I've said before, preacher and author A.W. Tozer spoke in plain language when he said, quote, Satan's greatest weapon 
is man's ignorance of God's word, end quote. Folks, ignorance will be no excuse come judgment day, which we will all face. About ignorance, Romans 1.20 reminds us, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. There's no second chance to get into heaven if someone dies before accepting Christ as their Lord and Savior. In John 8, 24, Jesus says, I said, therefore, to you that you shall die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Now, what Jesus is saying here is that one sin, the one sin that cannot be forgiven, the one sin that will send people to hell for eternity is to deny accepting him as their Lord and Savior. All other sins can be forgiven, but not the sin of denying Christ. That reality is the reason why we want to expose as many people as we can to the Word of God. And if you're able, make your gift today by going to treasuretop.com. You'll see the Give button right there at the top of the website. So let's get ready to dive in to Does God Predestine People for Heaven and Others to Hell by Election? Father, as we begin our study today on the doctrine of election and the doctrine of predestination, I pray that you will draw those who are far from you, close to you. We know that you desire for more people to accept your son before they die, because there is no second chance to do so after they die. And Father, help me present your word in context with full meaning as you intended so that there is clarity about predestination and election. In Christ's name, amen. As we talk today about does God predestine people for heaven and others to hell by election, let's first define the terms election and predestination. And then we will look at why these doctrines are considered controversial to accept by some because, you know, it sounds like God does not want to save everybody from hell. Election, the word election, when we talk about the doctrine of election, election looks back and refers to God's choosing certain people that he deemed to be his children before the formation of the world. Ephesians 1.4 says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. Predestination, the doctrine of predestination, when we talk about predestination, predestination looks forward to the destiny he has planned for those whom he has chosen. 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2 says, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father by the sanctifying work of the Spirit to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. Ephesians 1, 5 says, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. You know, there's some who will say there's no such thing as predestined or predestination or elect because God wants everyone to go to heaven. You know the problem with that? The problem with saying that predestined does not exist is that predestined is a Bible word. That word predestined is literally in the Bible, in the original Greek text. The Greek word for predestined is proorizo. And there are six passages that contain six occurrences of this Greek word for predestined, beginning with Acts 4.28, which records, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. This scripture is speaking about the action of Herod and Pontius Pilate in crucifying Jesus Christ and means that God has written all of history according to his eternal plan, predetermined or foredained by the hand and will of God. The mission of Christ, particularly his death and resurrection, was not the product of human will, but God's preordained, predestined will. The Apostle Paul in Romans 8.29 says, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8.30, and those whom he predestined, 
he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. The Apostle Paul again in 1 Corinthians 2, 7, but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. That means before the formation of the world. Ephesians 1, 10 and 11, in him also we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will. Those are six passages containing the Greek word for predestined, pro orizo. And here's the important part again, not by the will of any man, but wholly and 100% by the will of the Father. Same thing for people who say, there's no such thing as the elect. The problem with saying that is, elect is also in the Bible. The Greek word for elect is eklektos. The word elect appears eight times in the New Testament. Let's take a look. Three references are in the book of Matthew. Matthew 24, 22. Unless those days had been cut short, no life would have been saved, but for the sake of the elect those days will be cut short. Verse 24, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Verse 31, and he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. In Mark, the word elect also occurs three times. Mark 13, 20, Unless the Lord had shortened those days, no life would have been saved. But for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he shortened the days. Verse 22, for false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show signs and wonders in order to lead astray, if possible, the elect. Verse 27, and then he will send forth the angels and will gather together his elect from the four winds from the farthest end of the earth to the farthest end of heaven. Now let's turn over to Luke 18, 7, where scripture records, Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night, and will he delay long over them? And Romans 8, 33, who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. And there are other verses that refer to choice, chosen, such as 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God elects and predestines those whom he chooses. And if we further expand on the concept of predestined, remember election looks back and refers to God's choosing certain people that he deemed to be his children before the formation of the world. And predestination looks forward to the destiny. God has planned for those whom he has chosen. So expanding further on the concept of predestined to include God's calling and choosing us, I want to give you a few more scriptures and references. And due to our time limitations, I won't be able to read all of them. But if you're taking notes, Treasure Top family, write down these verses for further study. Hebrews 3, 1 and 2. John 15, 16. Romans 9, 11 and 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 31. And understand this. If someone tells you that predestined does not exist, their argument is really not with you. It's with the Holy Spirit inspired word of God. When I preach on election and predestination, I'm only the messenger of the word, not the author of the word. J.C. Ryle once said, if the Bible was man-made, it wouldn't go against all man-made desires. 2 Timothy 3.16-17 says, All Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Predestination is just one aspect of God. It's His rule over everything that He created and that He maintains that we learn in the Old Testament where other gods are the helpless 
illiterate and lifeless inventions of humans. Isaiah 41, 21 to 24. Present your case, the Lord says. Bring forward your strong arguments, the king of Jacob says. Let them bring forth and declare to us what is going to take place. As for the former events, declare what they were, that we may consider them and know their outcome. Or announce to us what is coming. Declare the things that are going to come forward, that we may know that you are God's. Indeed, do good or evil that we may anxiously look about us and fear together. Behold, you are of no account, and your work amounts to nothing. He who chooses you is an abomination. Isaiah 44, 9. Those who fashion a graven image are all of them futile, and their precious things are of no profit. Even their own witnesses fail to see or know, so that they will be put to shame. More on predestination is found in Jeremiah 10, beginning in verse 1, as a satire on idolatry. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, do not learn the ways of the nations, and do not be terrified by the signs of the heavens, although the nations are terrified by them. Drop down to verses 11 and 12. Thus you shall say to them, the gods that did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding he has stretched out the heavens. Verse 14 and 15. Every man is stupid, devoid of knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his molten images are deceitful and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of mockery. In the time of their punishment, they will perish. God is the absolute ruler of all history and is able to predict the future with absolute certainty. He predestines the future. In Isaiah 48, verses 3 to 5, God says, I declared the former things long ago, and they went forth from my mouth, and I proclaimed them. Suddenly I acted, and they came to pass, because I know you are obstinate, and your neck is an iron sinew, and your forehead bronze. Therefore I declared them to you long ago. Before they took place, I proclaimed them to you, so that you would not say, My idol has done them, and my graven image and my molten image have commanded them. Let's look at Daniel 4.35. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of earth, and no one can ward off his hand or say to him, what have you done? In looking at does God predestine people for heaven and others to hell by election? Well, let's look at a few more passages on predestination. Deuteronomy 7, 6 to 11 says, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any of the peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples. But because the Lord loved you and kept the oath which he swore to your forefathers, the Lord brought you out by a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps his covenant and his loving kindness to a thousandth generation with those who love him and keep his commandments, but repays those who hate him to their faces, to destroy them. He will not delay with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore, you shall keep the commandment and the statutes and the judgments which I am commanding you today to do them. These passages are saying that God predestined the people of Israel to be his holy and chosen people from all peoples on earth and that they would be the light of truth to the rest of the world. Folks, it's important to understand God chose man. He predestines events to happen. Man did not choose God, and man cannot predestine anything. 
God elects Christians to be his offspring. And as I quoted earlier in Ephesians 1, 4 to 5, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him, in love he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. John 1, 13 says, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John MacArthur put it this way, quote, The Father made a plan. The Son made the plan possible. The Holy Spirit makes the plan work. The Father elects us. The Son justifies us. The Spirit sanctifies us, end quote. What this means is that no one is saved by his or her own power. Again, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 reminds us, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works so that no one may boast. You know, it's not that God won't save everybody, It's that God can save anybody. And the Apostle Paul, formerly Saul, the one who persecuted and murdered Christians before his conversion to Christianity, Paul is a perfect example of how God can save anybody and use anybody for his purposes. Paul wrote over half of the New Testament, the Holy Spirit-inspired Word of God that he wrote down. If God can use a murderer, he can use you or me or anyone he chooses. If you know someone who has not been saved for eternal life in heaven, keep praying for the one that who has not accepted Christ because God can do anything, just as I illustrated with Saul, who became the Apostle Paul. Now, I can understand that the doctrine of election is hard to understand. It's hard for me to understand. But, you know, God's mind, we we have finite minds. We don't have the mind of God. I want to summarize what pastor and author John MacArthur once said. The balancing aspect is that God, one, holds all people responsible to put their trust in Christ and, two, to be saved. While these two things seem mutually exclusive, Scripture puts them side by side. The sinner is responsible if he rejects the gospel. He is accountable if he rejects the gospel. And he is punished if he rejects the gospel because he would not believe. We have to hold those two in tension and realize that the harmony and unity of these two truths are clear in the mind of God but beyond our own comprehension. For our comprehension, all we need to know is, if we have come to salvation, it is by the power of God. And if we reject salvation, it's because of our own will, and we are responsible. End of summarized quote. And I want to say this to any pastor or you or someone who teaches the word of God. And I saw this from another pastor that was posted on X. It's a reminder of just what the role of any teacher is who preaches or teaches the Word of God. It reads this way. It's not our job to convert people. It's not our job to save people. It's not our job to convict people. It's not our job to convince people. It is our job to tell people. And I'm going to borrow one more great John MacArthur saying, hard preaching makes soft hearts. Soft preaching makes hard hearts, end quote. Regarding the hard sayings of the Bible, Charles Spurgeon wrote, Jesus Christ will not tone down the truth of the scripture to suit your carnal taste. And Treasure Top family, that's why I will always preach the word, no matter what it says, not to tickle ears, but to proclaim the truth of the word of God in its entirety. And friend, if you have not already accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, do so before it's too late. You might say, well, how do I do that? 
If you feel a stirring in your heart, it could be God prompting you. Now is the time to accept Christ. Don't put it off. If I said before, there's no second chance to accept Christ if someone dies before doing so. Since any non-believer could die at any moment, now is the time to accept Christ before it's too late. And I do want to caution you on one thing so that you're not walking around as a false Christian thinking you're going to heaven when in reality you may not be. You cannot save yourself. Don't be fooled by someone who is either telling you or who has told you to repeat magic phrases in order to be saved or that by being called up to a stage in front of people and dunked in a water tank to be baptized, you're saved. None of that will save you. Only God can save you. How do we know that? We go to scripture to find out. I've quoted this verse several times today in this message. It bears repeating one more time. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. Like I just said a moment ago, if you feel a stirring in your heart, it may be God who is drawing you. If you don't know what to say to accept Christ, you can say something simple like, Jesus, please come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior, beginning now. Please forgive me for my sins. You know, God's not looking for perfect prayers. He's looking for submission to his will for your life. Well, that's all the time that we have today. You can download today's message, Does God Predestine People for Heaven and Others to Hell by Election?, free of charge or any of my messages, just go to treasuretop.com and see the podcast tab. Remember, it's not that God won't save everybody. It's that God can save anybody. And remember the illustration I just mentioned a few moments ago about the apostle Paul before his name changed from Saul, he persecuted and murdered Christians before his conversion to Christianity. Paul is a perfect example that God can save anybody and use anybody for his purposes. And that means you as well. If God can use a murderer, he can use you or me or anyone he chooses. I want you to really get that today because a lot of people think, hey, no good God would let me into heaven if, if people only knew what I had really done. No way would I ever go to heaven. That's a complete lie, folks. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, invited him into your heart and asked for forgiveness of your sins, you will go to heaven. And rest with this assurance. Those of you who have salvation, who are headed to heaven, some think, well, I could lose my salvation. Absolutely false. Here's what Jesus says in John 10, 27 to 29. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. And now, if you are able, please consider making a generous tax-deductible gift right now to Treasure Top to help us pay to broadcast the Word of God on radio, TV, YouTube, social media, and the Internet because God does not save anyone before they hear the gospel. And someone else's hearing the Word of God may depend on what you give. It may be that one person who otherwise would not have heard the Word had it not been for you. Remember, it is God who saves, but no one can be saved without hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17, God's gift of salvation is by his grace alone, through faith alone, by Christ alone, as we've learned in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. There are three ways to give to Treasure Top on the website at treasuretop.com and click on the Give button at the top of the screen. You can also text your donation with the word GIVE to 844-553-1590. That's the word GIVE to 844-553-1590. 
1590. And if you prefer by mail, our mailing address is Post Office Box 210 615 Nashville, Tennessee 37221. That's Post Office Box 210 615 Nashville, Tennessee 37221. Thank you for considering a generous donation in order that we may continue to evangelize the unbeliever and to energize the believer. Father, we've covered so much in such a short time. May those who have heard this message today, including those who have not accepted your son as of yet, now understand with the tension that may exist that your ways are not our ways and that your mind is something none of us can comprehend. As believers, we celebrate the joy of our salvation that comes as a free gift when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. We pray for those who have not come to Christ and we plead with them to believe knowing that whoever comes, you will receive and that it all works perfectly with your glorious and sovereign plan. In Christ's name, amen. And now it's Pastor John Haggard saying, until next time, May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.